So this, you probably don't know about this story, but maybe you do because you watch this show, so you're extra smart. And um, so for, this is from CNN Business. This is from a month ago, from September 18th. It says, for a second day, the New York Fed spent billions to calm the financial markets. Did you know that the financial markets needed calming? Did you? I didn't. Well, here, watch this. For a, yes, for a second straight, second straight day, the New York Federal Reserve injected a huge sum of money into the financial system in a bid to calm, to calm stress in an overnight lending market. When calm, was this? This was September 18th. It's still okay. happening. Still happening, by the way. Hang on, hang on. Let me, the Fed on Wednesday poured another $75 billion into the market following a $53 billion rescue by the New York Fed on Tuesday. Just like Stephanie Kelton says, they just invent money. They just fucking print it. You need fucking $53 billion? There you go. I need $53 billion to send people to college. What are you, nuts? We can't afford that. But I need $53 billion to give to the banks that nobody will talk about. Here you go. Here you go. No problem. What the fuck? Yeah, we'll just print it. Don't worry about it. What the? So here, it keeps going. Overnight lending rates have suddenly spiked, and the Fed is acting to bring them back down to keep markets functioning smoothly. Until this week, get this, the Fed hadn't launched an operation like this since 2008. Nobody is talking about this. Come on, how about a little kudos for me doing the sound effect? Yeah! So the Federal Reserve Chairman, Jer Jerome Powell, said during a press conference that the steps were effective in relieving funding pressures. Well, I hope $130 billion <laughs> actually helps ease your funding pressure. If that doesn't, we're in real trouble. Uh, the aim is to keep borrowing rates down, blah, blah. The overnight lending rate spiked to a high of 10% on Tuesday Whoa. before the New York Fed stepped in. It has since tumbled below 3%, which is still above the Fed's target range. Still, the fact that the Fed needed to pump $128 billion into a system on successive days shows that a crack has emerged in a seldom discussed corner of Wall Street that is central to the global financial system. And it also raises concern that the Fed is losing its grip on the short-term rates the central bank is supposed to control. Boy, they, they, they are using some pretty tough, I mean, some pretty soft language. They're losing, there's a crack of $128 billion. That's not a fucking canyon? Are you kidding me? That's a crack. Dylan, tell me what's going on. It's not that big of a deal. Oh, okay, good. Where is that? <laughs> Dylan, what's going on? You're fine. <laughs> I'm going to be fine. You're fine. So tell I me. Mean, so do you have a problem right now? Yes. What is it? I have a problem You're that. You're fine. You had food, water. <laughs> what are you, you Ram Das? What <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> yeah, everything. This guy's Eckhart Tolle over here. Everything be here now. Everything's okay. Yeah. You know what the you want. Yeah. You're in this room. Yeah. You're having a good time. <laughs> like, like, it's a Sunday I night. I love Tolle, by the way. Yeah. You know, your house is not on fire. So tell us what happened. So now, so I know, so there's this system. Right, you want this? You want this? You yeah, want this? Yeah, I'll just give I you do. this. I do. We've no. been going on and on and on and on and on. But can you do it really succinctly? <laughs> <laughs> he can do it. So come on, Dylan, what's going on? The global financial system functions based on this. To be very clear. So, the, so if you think of the global financial system as a spinning top that's fat on the top and gets skinnier to a pointy bottom. Uh -huh. Can you see that? Like a top. Can you see that? So far, yeah. The diameter of the bottom of the top, the tip, the pointy part on the floor, are you with me? Yes. If I want to widen the diameter of that, yeah. that's how much money is in this market. So however much I add to this little tip at the bottom, mm -hmm. it adds to the overall size of the spinning top that I can put on top of it of global money. Trillions, 20s, go crazy. Okay. When the, mar when the rates spike in this market, what they're saying is the overall size of the financial top that is the spinning leverage of every bank in the world and every mortgage and business and ticket and whatever, anything, is maxed out. 
We've, we're at the edge of our risk capacity. Speculation. We're at the speculative edge of behavior and of risk taking. So when that number pops off, what that number is popping off is saying is it's hitting a bumper. It's saying, hey, like, I'm okay for you to spend $100 for like every dollar you have. But more than that is like crazy. So let me see if I can break it down to I can understand it. So okay. what's, what's going on is they're creating financial instruments like, say, derivatives and things like that. I'm saying for every dollar I can take in this market, I'm doing other things with those dollars to make them into tens and hundreds and thousands of dollars for and mortgages and credit cards and, and car so loans. so what you're saying is there's so much more. We've invented so many financial instruments, meaning so many loans and so many We things. have so many uses for money. The payroll yeah. at this bar, the payroll the, for the air. I mean, right. it's, all the money that moves to every transaction and so now we're at is our, derived from the size of the repo market, right. functionally. I mean, that's not exactly correct, but that's for our purposes and so, functionally correct. And so the reason why the, the rates are spiking is because certain banks aren't going to lend to other banks because they don't feel like lending to, uh, overnight is as safe as it used to be, right? Exactly, because the overall risk profile is seen as higher, right? So, no, so when one is maybe the bank's collateral is no good, maybe the default rate's too high, may, but the, uh, 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 there's a thousand maybes, and this is a sort of field day for people that want to get into the maybe Jamie Dimon has got him by the neck in the back of the room. Who knows? But what you do know is that the, ex the expression of extremity, of sort of vulnerability, of fragility in the financial system is, is showing itself in that repo market. That's the bad news. Do you want the good news? So that's, uh, yes. Do you want the I good news or yes. not? Yes, what's the good news? Doesn't matter. Does it, why doesn't that matter? Because after 2000, so what was Rahm Emanuel's number one line to the Democratic Party caucus, caucus when they, before they passed Dodd-Frank in order to whip votes? I, I don't know. That was his PR thing, but what did he say privately? I don't know, he said, call people retarded, I know that. He said, if you vote for this bill, being Dodd-Frank, which facilitates and allows a lot of everything you're talking about to happen without anybody knowing about it, unless fools like you bring it up. Uh-huh. If you don't mind. No problem. All right. Um, Rahm Emanuel said, if you vote for this bill being Dodd-Frank, you will never have to have a public vote on a bailout of any financial system ever again because we're going to create this law that makes everybody a bank holding company. Creates, it doesn't matter what the words are. They created a way for the central bank legally to have direct access to a set of banks without any political interaction of any kind ever again. And as a result of that, in the past it used to be when you'd run up against the bumpers, you'd be like, well... I guess I got to go call somebody and ask for $100 billion because I got a little bit of it. Now they're like, don't bother. Like, it's just tap it. And so the only place the risk actually lives after you get off of the emotional and the betrayal and the theft and the horrors that all that we can talk about, they've figured out that they can make all of that risk live inside the currency that is the US dollar, which is an entirely different conversation for a different day. But because they know the dollar is the default currency of the world, it's the currency. So the US dollar, I don't know, the, again, don't quote me, 10 to 15% of the world's economy is sort of functions as, as US dollars in terms of US dollar driven. But 60% of global economic activity between any country and any country is conducted in dollars. So if you're Belgium and you're trading chocolate with, with Brazil, you're going to trade that in a dollar-denominated currency, a bunch of Belgian, not, not in euros versus real. I mean, it's a whole other. Right. So the point is, because the dollar is the dominant currency, we can make as many as we want, which would take you to your Stephanie Kelton conversation, and do whatever we want with it until the dollar does what the pound did or the peso did or whatever, which is why then people get maniacal. You're some of the people in this audience, I believe, I feel some maniacal energy coming from them. And they're concerned about the pretend this currency dynamic, but that could take 50 years, so just don't worry about it. <laughs> Really? So the ATMs are going to work tomorrow. Oh, yeah. yeah. So let me ask you this. So let me ask you this, Dylan. So, that's no problem. Dylan, so let me ask you this. So if this... It's easy to get upset about. So yeah. if this... <laughs> they fixed it. If they didn't have this rule that Rahm Emanuel engineered... Well, not, I mean, again, he, the, he was a whip for votes yeah. for it. He didn't... Chris Dodd, Barney Frank was really essential in this. I mean... So if there wasn't this Dodd-Frank legislation... The whole point of this law was to eliminate the need to go to the politicians ever again for money. So, there, so we'll never have another Open tarp. Open the line so that when we'll you hit We'll never have tarp again. 
everybody's a bank holding company. This commercial paper funding facility is intact. I don't want to list a bunch of words. It doesn't even matter. So yes, they put together an arrangement that allows them to okay. directly inject capital, so that you never have, so that they never have to do have. The, look at this guy's face. Right. Look at him. He's pissed the fuck off. I know. I am like, too. I'm like, like do it. you like do you think they want to deal with him in a vote? So fuck so no. So so they're like, we'll just do this on the backside before Party Boy and West right. and then over on Sunset shows up with that face. So, so <laughs> you're not so gonna let me, like it. So Dylan, let me just ask this question. So if they well, didn't they did. have, if they didn't have this rule or did this thing that Dodd Frank, if they didn't create this classification of banks. And if they didn't do that's that, that's what it is. So they could right now we would have be having a crisis and we would have because to have the banks a, would have to say we need hey, a, hey 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 we need 130 billion dollars overnight. Me up. And then they'd be like, no no, what'd you do? So what there'd be you, this would be like 2008 all over again with Barack. I, I mean, I'm not gonna say that it's gonna be like that. But it would but, be. I mean, it could be. Yeah. It will be. Okay. So well, no, it never been... will be because the law ensures it never will because you're never going to have the hiccup. Oh, Imagine a wow. car. So here, so li listen, let me just, then I'm going to stop. I'm done. I know. I really am done. <laughs> no, we're done. Okay. We got to go. We're but done. what I'm saying is the financial system before 2008 was a car without suspension. And so when it hit a hole, it had to go and get, and what the number one thing Dodd-Frank did was install suspension by making everybody bank holding companies and systemically significant financial institutions that had access to directly the window without any political or legal intervention whatsoever so that we can ensure this never fucking happens ever again. Because if you're Hank Paulson and you're Tim Geithner and you're the boys down in D.C. from, you, do you think that was a good time? And two, right, they, that was they, they think they're like, man, that was great in 2009 right. when that whole thing just blew right up in our face and we all had to like sit around in the room and try to figure out who to kill. Yeah. Like, that was great. <laughs> or they're like, man, that kind of sucked. Too big to fail. So, well, I, you know, I hear that. It's all in the currency now. It doesn't matter. Jo what, enjoy yourself. What Dylan just said, I hear in the deli every day. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's fine. Everything's, Everything's fine. fine. Everything's fine. Be here now. All right, they, be they're here they're now. Playing that card I hear guys ordering a sandwich and going, look at it like it's a top. <laughs> What's a top? The financial system, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Our next live Jimmy Dore show is November 5th in Buffalo, New York, November 17th in Philadelphia, and December 27th in Honolulu. Go to JimmyDoreComedy.com for a link for all of our live shows and become a patron or a Jimmy Dore show member at JimmyDoreComedy.com slash join and uh, support the show. We give you hours of bonus content every week. Thanks for your support.